Hi, I'm Denis Gagné. I'm the CEO and CTO at Trizatech. And I'm John Sverbley, uh, CMIO at Trizatech. Thanks for joining us today. We're going to be talking about informed consent and showing how BPMN Plus Health automation tools and the FHIR consent resource can work collaboratively uh, in this area. Uh, first slide, please. So let's get started on informed consent, uh, the concepts, so we can all start off on the same page. Uh, next slide, please. When anybody goes to the doctor, the uh, one thing that a patient shares is the desire that they control their health care. What they want is that their wishes are followed, and if they want care, they get care. If they don't want care, they don't want to get it. All these are elements of patient-centered care where the patient is the focus of the healthcare delivery. There are two ways that this can be achieved. One is by informed consent. The second is by advanced directive. In advanced, uh, sorry, in informed consent, the competent person can decide at this point whether or not a procedure or medical care be delivered at that time. For advanced directives, the same person can dictate uh, at some time in the future when there may not be competent to make a decision that their wishes be expressed or that there be a person appointed who can make decisions for them. Both these are necessary for medical care to be delivered. Without them, uh, the procedure cannot uh, proceed. Uh, next slide, please. What we have here is a concept graph, and this shows those elements we just discussed. At the top, we have patient-centered care. At the middle is the, the competent patient who can either have an informed consent or a advanced directives, and then the informed consent is required uh, to uh, have the medical procedure proceed. Uh, next slide, please. So informed consent is essential for the care of, of the delivery of care. And uh, in the simplistic world, oh, that's all you would need. It would just be if you have an informed consent, procedure proceeds. If not, then the procedure does not proceed. In reality, it's a little bit more complex than that, where there's a hierarchy of permissions uh, that uh, must be navigated. The first is informed consent, which takes priority over all other uh, decisions. If informed consent is not available, then we consider an advanced directive. If an advanced directive is not available, then implied consent is uh, provided if emergency care is required to preserve the patient's life. Finally, there are legal uh, consents that can be uh, uh, imposed by a judge. If none of these things are available, then the uh, medical procedure is not legally uh, capable of proceeding. Uh, next slide, please. When we look at uh, the process, of informed consent versus the consent form documentation. These are really interrelated but separate uh, uh, entities. For informed consent, this is a period of communication between the provider and the patient and family or authorized representatives where information about the procedure is given, questions are answered, uh, and every opportunity is given to bring the person to a point where they can make an intelligent decision about what care they do or do not get. The consent form is a legal document that uh, the patient signs that attests that they are giving permission. And this lists uh, the patient, the provider, the procedure, date and time with witnesses to ensure that this is a uh, compliant legal document. Uh, next slide, please. So in theory, this should all be relatively straightforward, but in reality, uh, many things can happen. And if, if this slide, and if you go to the next slide, these are just some of the things that can go wrong in the informed consent process. The provider may not uh, give all the information that's necessary or give a full disclosure. Uh, other alternatives may not be discussed. Many, many ways that the uh, process can be found to fail uh, at some point. One of the most common uh, ways of failure is that the consent is obtained by the provider in a timely fashion, but when the time of the procedure comes up, the consent cannot be found. This often happens when consent is obtained in an office, the procedure is done at a later time in a surgical center or a hospital, and the paper record has not made the transit as well. So it would be very uh, valuable and increase healthcare efficiency if there was some way for a consent to be uh, transmitted between uh, the medical record and the re a person requiring to know about the uh, informed consent. And for that reason, we're interested in the FHIR uh, consent form for medical treatment. 
Over to you, Denny. Thank you for this introduction, John. That was very useful to set up the stage about what we're going to talk next, where we're going to get a, a little bit more into the technology or technical aspect of this. So Fire R4 already defines a consent resource, uh, which we will be using in the context of our presentation today. So the current Fire resource uh, offers to support four use cases primary consent, medical treatment consent, research consent, and advanced care directives. So the privacy consent is really about allowing a third party to access the data and the information, where the medical treatment consent use case is about uh, a patient uh, providing consent to undergo a specific treatment. And the research consent is to provide consent to participate in a research protocol where advanced directives are various directives on what to do if the patient is not able to answer for himself um, and so on. So currently, the FIRE consent resource is only addressing the first uh, of these use cases, the privacy consent use case that has been elaborated. There is work to elaborate the other use case, but the current state is that the first one only is elaborated. So today, in the context of what we will try to present, we're going to use a model-driven approach. And a model-driven approach is basically depicted here, where we go from a narrative or text description of what needs to happen to what we call a computational independent model, where the behavior is specified, to what we call a platform independent model, where the logic is executable to finally get to a platform specific model where we're executing in a very specific context or environment. So this is reminiscent or uh, aligned or kind to the L1, L2, L3, L4 concept that are often used in healthcare. They don't align necessarily one to one, but are very reminiscent of one another. So one of the things that I wanna talk about now is the first gap going from the narrative to uh, the uh, computational independent model, uh, this gap here, we address by using some disintegrated term terminology so that we agree on what things mean. So John already introduced very briefly uh, early on the notion of a concept map. And a concept map is a way to basically express how different concepts are interrelated to one another. So here I'm showing a fire concept resource and saying that a fire consent resource expresses consent. And then I'm saying that a privacy consent directive is a fire resource, a medical treatment consent is a fire resource, et cetera. And so as we mentioned, the privacy consent directive is already elaborated in the fire documentation. And today we're gonna to focus more on the medical treatment consent that has not been yet uh, explored as deeply. And that's part of what we're doing today. So further on with this notion of a concept map, we can go into the details. So here I have my a fire consent in the middle and all the various elements that compose a fire consent resource. So I have the definition of the fire resource that's available. And for the various element, I can also specify various constraints and values that can be expressed. So a concept map is a very uh, specific way of making things very clear and disintegrated. Moving forward to all these concepts that we have with a particular term, we can add a definition. And then from the concept map, we obtain uh, basically for free uh, what we call relations or fact types. So for example, here you see the definition of an informed concept that is augmented with the notions that are coming from the concept map. So for example, an informed consent is a consent, uh, a competent patient provides informed consent, informed consent enables patient. And you can see that these fact types or these relations around the term give us more context for interpretation. So we're always uh, helping with context to disambiguate the term and what we're saying, not just by a definition, but by the general context that is around it. 
In the context of healthcare specific, we want to even further disambiguate these term and these concept map by using various ontologies, medical ontologies that are available. So for example, here, I'm uh, using the term medical procedure with its definition. And you can see at the bottom here that I'm using a value set uh, from the HL7 terminology ontology. And uh, this value set here is giving me some disintegration, further disintegration of what, I, what is meant by the term medical procedure in this context. And to the right, just as an example, I've also put a procedure consent document. And in this case, uh, I use a specific coding, uh, a loin code in this case, for a procedure consent document. So you can see that concept maps, vocabularies, and all these elements all contribute to, to uh, narrow and narrow and narrow the interpretation that is possible of these terms that we're using in our models. So let's now shift into uh, the BPM plus automation and the notions of workflow and decision on top of fire. So BPM plus is a community of practice that was uh, spun out to basically do the promotion of best practice around modeling and sharing of clinical pathways and automatable clinical guidelines. This is a community of practice that is open. Everybody is welcome to join. You can find the URL here at the bottom. If you're interested in joining us there, uh, we'd be happy to have you with us. So let's set up a little bit of terminology and notions around uh, BPM+. Plus. So we're really talking about workflow automation and decision automation. So for those that are not aware of these kind of technology or notion, so workflow automation is really the idea of being able to orchestrate activities uh, and to be able to react to events, where decision automation is really being able to provide an answer given some inputs. So given some inputs, I'm providing some answer to a question, which is the decision. So these two aspects, these two facets are covered by different standards that are provided by the object management group. Uh, and these standards include DMN, the decision model annotation, BPMN, the business process model annotation, and CMMN, the case management model annotation. Uh, DMN is really there to help us capture decision via decision tables and various logical expression on how the decision is made, where BPMN is used to prescribe a sequence of activity that needs to take place and the various paths that can be taken where CMMN is there to provide us a context in which we're going to react to event. And the uh, pattern that is used there is an event condition action type of pattern. So all three languages are there to cover a different aspect of what's needed to document the different clinical pathways and clinical decision. One further element that they all share, all these three uh, standards, is that their uh, visual notation, thus the name model and notation, is that they provide us with a visual way of capturing what we're trying to express, which makes it very convenient for subject matter expert and layperson to understand what is presented and also provides a quick reference, a visual reference to what we want to happen. Now, the benefit is that not only are these notation uh, human readable, but they're also automatable by machine. And that's a big win there. So let me try to cast where BPM plus comes into the big picture and complement what we already know and have with fire. So hopefully this slide will give you a little bit of context. So at the left end here, we have data that we want to aggregate from various source, various EMR device or different source of data. Now, when we introduce fire, FHIRE provides us with computable data. So rather than just core data, we have some data that is computable, which leads to, to data automation uh, based on common schemas, identity, and medical resources. To that, we can add CDS hook. And when we add CDS hook, then we add data in a clinical context. With this data in a clinical context, which is basically knowledge, uh, data in context is knowledge, so we have information automation that is 
is possible there. And we have that via metadata content and event awareness. Now, we can add on top of all this BPM plus health and this series of standards, and that provides us the orchestration of that knowledge that we've just uh, layered through by providing workflow and decision automation. And this is done by providing us or supporting us with task and activities, role and responsibility, decisioning, case management, event orchestration, and even mixing in AI and machine learning into this mix of workflow and decision, which leads to intelligent healthcare automation. So hopefully this casts very well to you how BPM Plus is complementary to what we've already been working for years under the fire and CDS point of view uh, and brings a lot of value uh, into our context. So let me move now into our medical treatment concept example and try to give you a little bit of a, of a look at what this would look like. So at the highest level uh, possible of abstraction here, we have in detail everything, but this is a BPMN diagram, which is basically showing us the sequence of activity or stages that need to take place uh, for consent. So I have first, we have to confirm the medical necessity of the procedure, and that in itself can be a lot of different activities, here we're just abstracting it with one box. Uh, that is followed by a particular procedure selection and information to the patient. Once this is done, then we go into this box that I've exploded a little bit where we have to obtain the medical treatment and we separated it in two separate box, two separate steps here, medical treatment consent and then writing that consent to the EHR. Now, the work that we've just done previously with all the disintegration here, I'm showing that by mousing over the term, I can get the definition of the term in context. So all the disintegration work that we've done is available within this model. And then we can proceed to schedule the procedure if that's what the next step is. So now I'm going to dig a little bit deeper into that uh, blue box that we have there. So this blue box itself is a process, a BPMN process as well, uh, where it basically start, the start event here goes to a medical treatment content and you can see the plus here. That means that I have other details that are modeled but are hidden in this diagram. And then I move on to either write the consent if it was provided and if consent was not provided, I just end this work here. Now, this is where fire comes into play into this context is I have what we call a data object. It's an information piece that this process will consume. The arrow here means that I'm consuming uh, this particular resource. And this particular resource is a fire resource. So here I have the full schema of the fire resource. So this data object within this process is already of the particular uh, structure that is according to a patient resource in fire. Now, moving further along, once I've done, I've got the patient information and I get consent, then I want to take this consent and write it back into the EHR, which is this service activity will do here for me is to go right back into the EHR. Now, my consent information, I want to map it back into the EHR. And for that, again, we'll use a fire consent resource that we've introduced earlier. So here on the left, I have the fire consent resource and I'm mapping it in at different level of imbrication or details, the values that I've collected through my process. So that gives me the overall uh, back and forth of the information to set you into the context. Let me now move into a little bit more of uh, an actual, and, and let me move into uh, a full screen maybe to give you more details. So here I have a BPMN model. You can see that I'm in a BPMN modeler. Uh, this is giving me my context. As I explained, this box in here, I have access to the definition in context, which helps disintegrate this, this diagram. Uh, then I can move into the details of these steps. Uh, and as I mentioned, this here is a of type uh, fire resource, a fire resource, a patient resource in this case, and I can dig into 
uh, the different details at different levels as needed. Uh, and then this is past year. And now this consent that is a local information is mapped into this. And I can go and look at the data mapping. And here I have my fire consent resource and I'm mapping in different value at different level of details within this resource. So this is all explained here and done. Now I can dig into this particular uh, sub process that we call the plus here, leads me to this diagram, which is the detail of how I obtain consent. So the first thing that we've done that we do here is to confirm the procedure. Uh, once we've confirmed the procedure, we query the decision maker to see if he is ready to make a decision. Uh, and based on his answer, uh, we'll either go and write the consent or get the signature and write the consent. Or if he's not ready, we'll cancel the procedure. Of, or if the person is uncertain, we'll schedule a new information session. So we have this abstraction going from the global context to the consent context to the specific about obtaining content. And now what I can do is I can take this model and publish it. Uh, and I won't do that because I've done that already. And this provides me with a, a CDS hook endpoint for that model. And that model, again, is informed by fire resource and writing back fire resource. So let me just copy this hook and then we'll go into this uh, EHR emulation environment. And here I basically have my various patients. I can navigate to the patients here and then I can go and add my new service. And this actually triggers that process, that BPMN process. And so uh, the first step, it's taking me to the first step for this creation, which is to confirm the procedure. And if I confirm the procedure, then it's moving me into the process steps, uh, which is to identify the procedure. So let's say this is a total hip uh, replacement. Uh, and what I'm showing you here is kind of an emulation or a mock-up of what would normally probably be in a, a smart on fire application, but this is just a, a, a test bed environment for me to show. So the next step here is to query the decision maker uh, to see if he is ready or she is ready to make consent. So let's say the person is uncertain. If I run this, uh, then we end the process with the requirement to schedule an information session. So let me close this, go back and let's switch patient. Uh, now for George, uh, let's go through a, a little bit of the same steps. So let's uh, go forward and confirm the procedure. I'll select the hip replacement procedure as we uh, announced we would discuss. Uh, so we go back, query the decision maker, uh, whether he's ready, let's say he is ready and it is the patient. And you'll notice that these options here are coming directly from the fire options that are available. Uh, and then I can run this, which sends me now to the review and sign the consent activity. So now I'm in the review and sign consent. So uh, we have the signatory that is the patient, the procedure is total hit. I can choose the file. Uh, here, I've already uh, pre-populated a few files. So I have my total hip uh, arthroplasty file. I run this and then this completes with uh, my status with the proceed with procedure and I have the information here. And if I go back to my patient and I start looking in George record, you can see that I now have uh, a few fire resources. I have 16 observation there, but I also now have a uh, fire consent 
drawers that is in there that's been within the EHR. And if I click on that, for those of you that are more fire, you can see my full body of my environment that was uh, created and introduced in there. So hopefully this gave you a little bit of an example of how we can bring together uh, BPM plus fire and CDS hook to address medical treatment. So back to you, John. Thanks, Denny. Uh, we've seen here how uh, uh, this current process could address the issue of the legal document being stored, retrieved, and shared, but it doesn't address other failures that we discussed previously. If we recall, the entire process of informing the patient and obtaining their consent is a fairly complex uh, process that may entail several resources over several days with several meetings. And all of this information needs to be captured uh, if we're really gonna understand why a particular uh, informed consent episode failed. This is something which would not be appropriate uh, to uh, have in the patient's uh, chart per se, but rather would be more appropriate for a consent management service where all the data can be stored. With Together with FHIR, where we have a consent form, we know it's been signed, we know the outcome, we know the data that would allow us to analyze uh, the case to find out where the shortcomings were, if there were any, and how to correct them in the future. And I think that brings us to the end. Uh, and so we've discussed uh, how to use BPMN Plus tools uh, together with uh, FHIR CDS hooks to deliver uh, medical treatment consent. Any comments, Denny? Well, thank you, John, for this conclusion. So fundamentally, hopefully you've seen uh, our goal was to show you how we can actually use the FHIR resource um, multiple fire resource, in this case, a patient fire resource and a constant fire resource, and use them within the context of BPM plus uh, by disintegrating the terminology, making sure the model is interpretable. And as John mentioned in the discussion, uh, we simplify the example here because there would be too much detail to go in this short presentation, but uh, hopefully you can grasp how easily it would be to do more and other type of environment. Um, we invite you to uh, go and use the Fire North prize pack code TRIZATEC uh, to go and win some different uh, prizes that are available with the Fire North conference. Uh, the code is at the bottom here. And John and I will be available for a Q&A session and a meet the speaker session uh, over the conference. We invite you to check this out in the schedule and come and uh, join us there for some q a thank you very much everybody have a great day thank you everyone